morning, friends. Uh, I don't have a cold, although I think I have airbag lung this morning, uh, breathing in the chemicals or whatever it was when the airbags deployed. But uh, grateful, ever so grateful to God that that we're here this morning. Um, If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Romans chapter 10. What verses am I reading? (laughs) Oh, verses 1 to 10. Yeah, my brain just went blank for a moment. Um, Yeah, we're going to look at the uh, chapter of Romans 10, 10 here for us this morning. It's also up on the screen for us. Brothers and sisters... My heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by, live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Um, a dying man said to his wife, uh, I'm about to die, but before I die, I would like to confess to you that I am, I am not faithful to you as a husband. I have lots of women in my life. Please forgive me. And the crying woman said, I knew it, and that's the reason why I poisoned you. Um, well, you know what? If, if sin and guilt are getting the better of you, there's now an app for that. Uh, CBS News reported back in 2011, there was a, a new application for the iPhone, uh, iPad and iPod Touch called the Confession Booth app. Um, all, you need, all, all you do is confess to your iPhone. It sell, it, at the time, it sold for $1.99. And is described as the perfect aid for the penitent. The program lets users compile a list of their sins. Uh, They get taken through the Ten Commandments with questions attached to each. And the app displays the sins along with a written act of contrition for the penitent. Well, we begin a journey today that will lead us to Easter. And as some of you know, this week... um, is the beginning of the season of Lent in the church calendar. Uh, It's a season that brings opportunities to give things up, but also to take things in. Um, It's a season where we can find rest, where we take time for self-reflection. It's also a season for us to seek repentance, reconciliation, and restoration. It's a time to take a a, a breath from our fast-paced lifestyle and find hope and healing in Christ, even even in the midst of our own personal damage. We're going to spend the next few weeks as we head towards Easter and and look at some traits or some disciplines that will hopefully bring us to a deeper sense of God's presence in our lives and also a preparation for what He has done for what He has in store for our church. So this morning, we're going to talk briefly about 
confession and what it means and what it does in us. Well, Paul starts off the chapter by sharing his desire for his people to be saved. And and he's encouraging them by recognizing uh, their zeal to follow God's laws. But he says that their zeal is not really based on knowledge, but on really just the meticulous following of the law. And following the law was by no means easy, but they felt it made them righteous before others. Paul reminds reminds his audience what Moses said to the ancient Israelites. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. Now that verse comes from Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5. It's basically, Leviticus, <laughs> Leviticus is basically a, a, a book of laws written for the Israelite community to follow as God's people. But as Paul mentions, this relationship with God built on following the law has no element of faith to it. If one were to confess of their relationship with God, it would be, I follow God because I follow His laws. There's nothing personal to it. It's more like following a contract. It's a false righteousness that's built on what the individual does to stay good. We cannot rescue ourselves by following the law, even if it's a good thing. Oswald Chambers confessed, If I work for God because I know it brings me the good opinion of those whose good opinion I wish to have, I'm a Pharisee. If I love Jesus Christ, I will serve humanity through though men and women treat me like a doormat. Real righteousness comes through our confession of faith. Confession uh, brings God near to us. Verse 8 says, the word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. Now, now let me clarify. God is always near us, or He always desires to be near us. But there are times when we pull ourselves away from Him and confession brings us close to Him once again. Confession is a, is a spirit-triggered event. Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Before we come to Jesus, God is trying to draw us to Himself. And when we come in our brokenness, we are prompted by God to declare, Jesus is Lord. When we first say Jesus is Lord, it begins in us an eternal relationship with God, but confession should not end there. Declaring Jesus as Lord should be a regular habit. When we get married, we say, I love you in front of our family and friends. But that shouldn't be the only time we say it. And nowhere does Paul say that we have to have figured life out or uh, or that we have had to be perfect or mature or have to attend a specific church. No, it simply says if you recognize how near God is and say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart Jesus is alive, you will be saved. But with that, it's important to note that confession is more than just saying some words. Confession is more than than reading a creed, although that is important. This confession needs to come from the heart. Confession is the the casting away of any other path we think leads to salvation. Jesus is our only Savior. Confession is a, a recognition that I am not in control, that Jesus is Lord. 
Confession is a recognition that I cannot do it on my own. It's admitting our need and and that our sin blocks us from God. It will also mean admitting those sins before God and, and sometimes others. The Apostle John said, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, nine. Confession will also mean making amends. Confessing Jesus before those we have wronged and, and paying back what we have stolen or, or broken. Not, not as a way to earn salvation, but as a part of of the declaration of the confession of Jesus as Lord. Uh, in the Metro News Auto Edition uh, in 2008, uh, told of 22 people dying from eating cold cuts processed by Maple Leaf Foods. To his credit, Michael McCain, the, the Maple Leaf CEO, owned up to the fact that the meats were contaminated with listeria at his company's plant in North York, Ontario. Maple Leaf took full responsibility and began taking immediate steps to ensure such a tragedy would never happen again. Maple Leaf also moved to expedite settlement of lawsuits and actually supported increased regulation of the meat processing industry. In this story, we see confession. We, we see the admission and we also see contrition the, the taking of steps to change and not repeat uh, the outcomes. There's some practical ways confession works in a Christian's life. The practicing of the sacraments is one simple way. When we as individuals choose to be baptized and go under the water or have it poured over us, we're confessing our faith in Christ. As well, when we participate in communion as a congregation, it tells anyone who comes that Jesus is Lord over us. He's Lord of us. These are public ways that we draw closer to God. We also have times of testimony where we tell our fellow brothers and sisters in the faith how Jesus is is Lord over us. And of course, when we witness to our community, our neighbors, our, our co-workers, our family, it's also a form of confession as disciples. Billy Graham said, there's something about making a, a public confession that seals it in your heart confirms it to your friends, and makes it much easier to live the life you have openly proclaimed. Confession is just one way for us to remain in step with Jesus. There's a song I I recently discovered called Behold Our God. Let me read some of the lyrics for you. Who has held the ocean in His hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at His voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Behold our God, seated on His throne. Come, let us adore Him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore Him. Who has given counsel to the Lord? Who can question any of His words? Who can teach the one who knows all things? Who can fathom all His wondrous deeds? Behold our God seated on His throne. Come, let us adore Him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore Him. Who has felt the nails upon His hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man? 
God eternal humbled to the grave. Jesus, Savior risen now to reign. Behold our God seated on His throne. Come, let us adore Him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore Him. Confession means abandoning all other hope except what's found in Jesus. Confession means we've entered into a covenant with God. It also means we admit our need for rescue. Confession involves admitting our sin before a holy God. But it also includes proclaiming Jesus as Lord. And it's one of the holy places where God and humanity meet. Confessing Christ as Lord comes as a response to the gift of God's love. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Our scripture says, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. That is what confessing Christ is. Pastor uh, told this story. He said, some years ago, I met Johnny Moore. Johnny is the lead singer for His Glory. He tells a story of how he was on his way home one night before he got serious with the Lord. He'd been kind of playing church. He was on his way home from a Wednesday night prayer meeting, and he was stopped by a policeman. The officer found some pills and cocaine in his car. And Johnny tried to tell the officer he was a church member. He, you know, that he was a Sunday school teacher, that he sang with a gospel group. And he was just coming from church. But none of that mattered. They still put him in jail. And that experience was good for Johnny Moore. It, it woke him up to the fact that all of his playing at Christianity wouldn't matter when he faces the Lord of heaven someday. It was like a bucket of ice-cold water slapping him in the face, but it convinced him of his need for the one who is living water. And he made a public and lasting confession of his need. And now his life has changed since Jesus is on the throne. We confess with our mouth and we believe with our heart. Both of these are involved in confession. The outward testimony and the inner belief. It's, it's a gift of God. I, I mean, it, when you think about it, it seems so simple to just say Jesus is Lord. And yet, something amazing takes place when for the first time someone deliberately says it from the heart. A link is forged between us and God that is strengthened over time as we live out that confession in our daily lives. Right now, we're seeing something take place across Christian colleges in the States. Many are standing up and confessing Christ. Something is happening in the lives of thousands as they draw closer to God. What is God asking of you today? Have you been pulled away from Him? Do you need to declare once again that Jesus is Lord of your life? Let's pray. Lord God, once again, we're 
reminded of the important need to confess that Jesus is Lord. To say in one voice, Jesus is Savior, Jesus is Lord. Lord, not only of my heart, but over my life. Jesus is Lord over our church. Jesus is Lord over this city. Jesus is Lord over all creation. God, there may be some today that have forgotten that. There may be some today that are listening even online coming to this fact for the first time and and recognizing that they need to say, yes, Jesus is Lord. Holy Spirit, speak into the hearts and lives of those hearing this today. Whether it's here in our space or online. And whether it's Sunday or some, sometime throughout the week that they're, they're listening to this service. God, You are not done. You are not done bringing Your kingdom, expanding Your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And so Lord, continue to speak into our hearts and lives. Bring us into those places and spaces where we can declare Jesus is Lord. And thank You. Thank You that that's not a one-time thing. (laughs) That we can declare Jesus is Lord every day of our lives and be transformed by that, that message. So continue to be with us this morning. God, in this space. Continue to work in us. And as we sing... Lord, there may be some this morning here that, that as we sing, that need to say, yes, Jesus is Lord. So continue to be with us in worship, I pray. In Jesus' name.